Hey kids, Tavi Rider here. Uh, in some recent videos, there have been some sneak peeks of my hall of circuits, and I've had some requests to do a tour of the hall, and this is it. If you're interested in learning how redstone logic gates work, this is a good tour. Uh, let's start with a couple of quick things for some double door systems. Single doors just kind of run into the wall when you try to go through them sometimes, so I like these double doors. This one, they offset, but they open very smoothly. Uh, and this one, just a little bit of circuitry beneath. This one, they don't open at the exact same time, but they look nicer. But the main attraction here is the logic gates. Uh, now, the plans for all of these, I didn't invent any of these. These came from the Minecraft wiki. You can look up uh, redstone on the wiki, and you'll see plans for how to build every one of these. Uh, I just wanted to show off how they work. So each one of these has an input with a lever, and you'll see the output on the back. So in this case, the very simple NOT gate, it gives you the opposite of whatever the input is. The input is on, the output's off, and vice versa. Real simple. Uh, this is your OR gate, where if any of the three inputs are on, then the output is on. If none of the three outputs are on, then the output is off. The next one is the AND gate. There's two inputs to this, and the output is only on if both of the inputs are on. If either of them are off, the output's off. The NOR gate, this is the opposite of the OR gate. So if any of the inputs are on, the output is off. Uh, and similarly, similarly, there's the NAND gate, which is the opposite of an AND gate. In this case, the output is off only if both of the inputs are on. Uh, and you could construct a NAND gate, starting with an AND gate, and then putting a NOT in the middle of it. You know, uh, some of these aren't really all that special, but sometimes it's more convenient to have exactly the gate you need. Sometimes it's more compact or uses fewer resources. Now here's a somewhat different one. This one is exclusive OR or XOR. This one, the output is only on if the two inputs differ. So in this case, one on, one off, the output is on. If they're both on, then the output turns off again. And similarly, there is an XNOR. So this one is, uh, let's see, how does this one work? This one, the output is only on if the inputs match. So if one is on and one is off, the output is off. If they're both on or both off, then the output is on. This is a, an unusual one. This is called an implies gate. This one is no longer symmetrical. The outputs are different. This is the input A and input B. And input B doesn't mean anything unless input A is on. And if input A is on, then input B is on, ha uh, has to be on in order for the output to be on. So basically, if this is on, it implies that this is also on. And if that statement is true, then you'll have the output being on. A little odd, I haven't found a use for this one yet. Now, every one of the gates up until now, the output is based only on the input. The RS NOR latch also has some history to it. So this one actually has two outputs, they're just the opposite of each other. Um, and the RS stands for reset and set. So this is the reset line, and this is the set line. Now when you hit the set line, this is the actual output right here. The set line turns on the output, and it stays on, no matter what you do, until you hit the reset. And when you hit the reset, now the output is off. And you can keep hitting that. So it remembers whatever the state it was in last. That's why it's a latch. Uh, this is how you control uh, the gates, or the, uh, the switches for minecart tracks, typically. Uh, a T-flip-flop is uh, an interesting kind of flip-flop. There's several kinds. This one, it, all it does is toggle the output right there whenever the input is powered. So when we step on the plate, it turns from off to on. Step on it again, it turns from on to off. Uh, this one has all sorts of interesting uses. Very sprawling, complex circuit. I had to push out the wall to fit it. 
Uh, and that's it for all the regular gates that I bothered to implement in my hall. But now we have some of the new redstone repeater based things. This is just a demonstration of how it works. This are, these are repeaters with the delay as short as possible, with them as long as possible, and then this is with the repeater reversed. And you can see this one lights up very quickly, this one lights up slowly, and this one doesn't light up at all. Uh, this one is the very fast clock. Uh, you can see my other videos for all sorts of things about how this works. And then this one comes courtesy of Minecraft Addict, the guy who made those wonderful minecart station in a box videos. Uh, this is a very compact pair of RS NOR latches that are based on the uh, new redstone repeater. And what we have here is a set line for the first one, and that's the output. The output actually is on in this case. And this is a set line for the other one. And then we have a single reset line for both of them. So uh, the reset line can simply be shared across the top of them, which is how uh, Minecraft Addict was able to stack so many of them into his little box uh, for the minecart stations. So that's all that I have in my hall, but I have room to put in some more circuits because I'm sure there will be more. Um, and I know people are going to ask for a download of this world so they can try these out for themselves. I really recommend that you build these yourself. You'll learn a whole lot about how these things go together. Uh, the Minecraft Wiki has plans for pretty much all of these, uh, and practicing building them is very helpful, especially understanding the notation that's used on that page. So I hope this was helpful, and I hope that people use this to create all sorts of fantastic redstone creations.